All right, so welcome. Um, I'm going to be talking to you about prime numbers in general, uh, but I'm going to focus most of my energy on twin primes. And by uh, the end of this video, which is about an hour long, I'm going to be talking about the twin prime conjecture, which uh, states or suggests that there are infinitely many twin primes. This has not been proven yet. Um, now, my name is Carlos Perez, and uh, I'm a mechanical engineer. Uh, from South America, but I live in the United States now, and I've been here for about five years. Um, now, why prime numbers? Uh, about 11 months ago, I was uh, reading Yahoo News, and there was one article about a uh, $250,000 prize for anybody that could find a prime number up to one billion. Now, I didn't see the word digits, and uh, you know the number one billion and the number of one billion digits are two very different numbers. Uh, one billion digits is uh, inconceivable, pretty much, while one billion is only uh, ten digits. Now, I'm really glad I made this mistake, because um, otherwise, if I had realized it was one billion digits, I may not even have bothered to study prime numbers in the first place. So, um, let's get started. So The first thing I did was um, draw a circle of diameter 1 like so um, you know this represents the number 1 I had no clue where the hell I was going but um, I kept going and the next thing I did was draw a circle of diameter 2 and 3 and 4 all the way up to whatever number I wished I think we only have here eight circles, but that's okay. Um, I was just trying to figure out how numbers fit into each other. So what I did next was I actually made a bunch of consecutive circles. Like so. And uh, you may be thinking, you know, this means nothing. But um, I figured out that there's a way to tell how numbers fit into each other pretty easily and uh, that's by merging all of these circles into one common origin so how do I do that well all I did was uh, move each row of numbers or circles um, onto one main origin now what does that look like well it looks like this um, here you can see how numbers fit into each other and there's a very simple way of uh, knowing which numbers are prime and that's when only two circles intersect at their front quadrants on the number line now in this image is really easy to see that how um, well this is the number zero here you got the number one number two is a prime number you got one and two circles intersecting here the number three is also a prime number. You got number one and the number three intersecting here. Then four, five is also a prime number. You got this circle and this circle intersecting there. Then six is not prime. See how there's uh, several different numbers that fit onto the number six. Seven is also a prime number. You got one and the number seven fitting onto this number. You got eight is not prime. You got to see a bunch of factors here. 9 is not prime. You got 1, the number 3, which is this circle here, also fits onto 9, and then the number 9, obviously. You got 10 is not prime because it's even, so you, even numbers cannot be prime because they're always divisible by 2. 11 is prime. You got 1 and 11 only here, and so on and so forth. Now, in this image, um, I included 100 and 45 circles, I believe. I can't remember how many, but um, there's a lot of circles included here. And as you can see, the pattern gets really intricate. And as you get away from the uh, origin, it gets even more intricate. You get further away even more, and you can see how the image changes. And it's pretty much uh, very chaotic. I mean, it's uh, crazy. So we're back at the origin here, and uh, you may be thinking, what the heck am I looking at? Um, well, basically, this image is 
uh, variant of the sieve of Eratosthenes, which was discovered, you know, millennia ago. Uh, but that's okay, you know, I came up with this stuff basically uh, independently, and um, it was great. When I discovered this image, it just exploded in my face, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Um, it was very useful, too. Uh, I've been able to discover a lot of things about prime numbers and you're you know you're gonna see and you'll be surprised at uh, you know by how much information you can acquire from this image I want to show you guys what this image looks like when uh, you're around the number 20,000 or so and it looks really cool um, let's just zoom out here yeah, zoom out more don't worry about all these weird lines I got going on. Um, Alright, and here we are around the numbers 20,000. And here we can see prime numbers. Sorry about the blank here. Come on. Alright, here we go. So... At this point, uh, I'll explain this later, but when we're past the largest number used in the sieve, we're only going to have one circle intersecting the number line. And when you only have one circle, you get a prime number, like here. This number is 20,249, which you can uh, probably check online in a prime numbers list or something. This is a prime number. Here we got another prime number, another one here. and the cool thing about this is the pattern is it just looks cool it looks like a fractal or something um, this is uh, my favorite part of this image I mean how the image changes as you get away from the origin is really cool and I got a wallpaper for this and I got posters and all kinds of stuff so if you guys wanna buy some you know just uh, email me or let me know Now, one of the things I asked myself was, is there any way to make this sieve more efficient? You know, using less information, can I still find prime numbers? And the answer is yes, you, you can do it. Um, and here's what I did. I actually just went into the origin and started to figure out that you got the number three here. The number three fits onto the number nine, for example, which is here. That's the number nine. So if the three fits onto the number nine, do I really need the number nine in the sieve? And the answer is no, I really do I really don't. Um, the num this is the number nine, and here's the number three. The three will always fall onto the same locations as the number nine, no matter where you are on the sieve. So, since nine is a multiple of three, we do not need the number nine. Now, let's do the same thing with the number five. Let me get rid of this is the number five here and the number five fits onto the number fifteen which is here that's the number fifteen right there in the vertical white line so you can see this is the number five here which fits onto the number fifteen so do you really need the fifteen the answer is no you don't need the 15 because you already got the 5 on there. So we get rid of that one. And we leave the number 5. So since 15 is a multiple of 5, we don't want it. So let's think about we j what we just uh, did for a second. Um, we're getting rid of all the multiples of prime numbers, pretty much. So if you're getting rid of all the multiples of prime numbers all you're gonna be left with is prime numbers themselves 
So after, you know, you're going through the sieve and you keep getting rid of all the multiples, are you all you're going to have uh, in your image is uh, circles that represent prime numbers. So uh, what does that look like? Well, I'll show you in a minute. But before I do that, um, we also have to look at something else, which is if, say, we multiply the number 3 by the number 2, that's um, 3 times 2, you're going to get 6, which is right here. But we know that 6 is, a, is an even number, and even numbers cannot be prime by definition because they can always be uh, divided by 2. So we never want a prime number multiplied by a uh, even f number. We always want a prime number multiplied by an odd number. So that's going to change the sieve or this image a lot. So how does it change the sieve? Um, let's look at it what's going to happen is you're going to lose information information that's not needed really to uh, acquire prime numbers in this image so let's look at it and this is what it looks like what I did was I got rid of all even numbers and I only used prime numbers in the sieve and this is a very efficient way of looking at the sieve you know now I'll explain why there, there's some rules we have to be careful with uh, before we get to this point where the vertical line is the vertical white line but after this whatever we have or oh, wherever we have only one circle intersecting the number line we're gonna have a prime number so this is a prime number that's a prime number and we keep going that's a prime number and we keep going and that's what it looks like and this represents I believe the number 961 which is the square of the largest prime number used in the sieve so anything before this anything prior to this line here is going to be a prime number for sure and I'll explain why you can only get prime numbers up to the square of the largest number used in the sieve and there's a very uh, easy to understand explanation of why that happens so here we are back at the origin and um, we have in our hands a more efficient form of the sieve without including all the multiples of prime numbers which you know makes the sieve a lot less cluttered it helps out a lot to you know keep the uh, weight of the file down and uh, you know, it helps us out with uh, the, the ease of creating this graph. Now, what I'm going to show you next is why does the sieve only give you prime numbers up to the square of the largest number used in the sieve or the square of the largest circle used in the sieve, which is this one in this case. And that's a uh, 31 diameter circle. So the largest number we're using in this sieve is the number 31, which if we use a calculator, it'll take us up to 961, which was one of the lines I, sh I showed you before. So we can, with this sieve, we can get prime numbers up to the number 961. And uh, there's a very good reason why we can do that, and uh, that's coming up next.